All right, let's take a look here at uh, deployment for Azure App Services, and let's just first define deployment. So that's the action of pushing changes or updates from a local environment or repository into a remote environment. And Azure App Services has a lot of options for us, and that to me is the most powerful thing about Azure App Services because uh, it's easy to deploy a web app to a virtual machine backed by a database, but figuring out deployment is a very time consuming and tricky thing. And Azure App Services gives us so many options, unbelievable amount of options. It is so, uh, so great of them to do that for us. So we can run from a package, deploy zip or, or a RAR, deploy via FTP, deploy via CloudSync, deploy continuously from like GitHub, we use Azure pipelines, deploy using custom containers, uh, using Docker Hub, Azure Container Registry, deploy from a local Git repo, deploy using GitHub Actions, deploy using GitHub Action Containers, de or deploy with an ARM template. So we're not going to look at all of these, how they work, but let's look at a few of them so we ha just have an idea how robust of these options are. The first one we're going to look at is running from a package. And this is when files in the package are not copied to the WW uh, root directory. Instead, the zip package itself gets mounted directly as a, a read-only WW route directory. So basically all other deployment methods and app service have to deploy to the following directory. If it's if you're on a Windows machine, it's going to be home site WW root. If you're on Linux, it's going to be home site WW root. And so since the same directory is used uh, by your app at runtime, it's possible for deployment to fail because of uh, file lock uh, uh, conflicts. And for that, and for that reason, uh, the app will, might behave unpredictably because some of the files are not uh, yet updated. So this is the reason why you might want to create a package. Um, it's just because it, it circumvents the issue of just replacing files in the folder. Uh, another method is the zip and rar deployment. This is, uses the kudu servers, uh, service that powers continuous integration based deployments. And kudu is used for a lot of things, but it's an engine behind Git deployments and Azure app services. And it's open source project that can also run outside of Azure. And so kudu supports the following functionality for zip file deployments. And it supports a lot more than just zips, but it does deletion of files left over from a previous deployment, option to turn on the default build process, which includes package restore, deployment customization, including run deployment scripts, deployment logs, a file size of, uh, uh, what is it, two gigs? Two gigs. And uh, you can use it with the CLI, the API, uh, via REST with curl, or the Azure portal. Uh, so, uh, by the way, that's, that's you uploading a zip, uh, but you're essentially using kudu underneath, okay? Uh, and so let's go take a look at another deployment method, which is file transfer protocol. Uh, FTP has been around for forever. And this is pretty much how people thought you were supposed to deploy your apps in the late 90s and early 2000s. I don't think it's a really great way to deploy, but the point is, is that if you want to do it this way or you have a use case that makes sense, you can do it. So the idea is that in the deployment center, you would uh, say, I want to use FTP. And you just uh, you get an FTP endpoint, your username and password. And uh, that's your credentials, and you use your FTP client to connect. Uh, very old school, but it's an option for you, which is really nice. Another way, which to me is a bit bizarre, but it's cool that you can do it, is you can use Dropbox or OneDrive to deploy using Cloud Sync. So the idea is that you have Dropbox. It's a third-party cloud storage service. OneDrive is the same thing. It's just Microsoft's uh, thing. And so you go to the deployment center, configure Dropbox or OneDrive, and when you turn it on, it will just sync, uh, or it'll just create a folder in your Dropbox drive, and that will get synced. So that's the one for OneDrive, that's the one for Dropbox, and this is gonna sync to that WW root there. Uh, I, I would have loved to take in some screenshots, but I couldn't find how to turn the service on, but I know it exists, uh, and I just was, I thought that was so bizarre. But yeah, there you go, that is the uh, deployment methods there.